Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. The radio and TV version of the show air in over 12 states. This includes both coasts and Silicon Valley. The show also airs in the UK, Caribbean, and Australia. For full show times, plus past episodes of the TV and radio show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. We just launched a free online community to connect past guests, listeners, and others. This community will allow you to network, chat on Slack, or get help with anything else, and a lot more. If you're interested in joining the community, buying some merch, sponsoring the show, or signing up for the newsletter, please go to buildingthefutureshow.com. The show is a proud media partner for the 11th Annual Media Excellence Awards, which are produced by Axis Entertainment in Los Angeles, California. The Media Excellence Awards are recognized as the most influential awards show, honoring innovation and leadership in all things mobile entertainment, lifestyle, and technology. For more information on how to submit to these awards, please visit MediaXAwards.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have John Krotek. He's the CEO of Green Zone Hero, and he's a proud veteran. John, welcome to the show. Hey, Kevin. Uh, so glad to be here and uh, and motivated and uh, appreciate you taking the time to call me down here in Florida to hear our story. Sure, man. Well, I first off, I, I think, like, thanks for your service. I, I think we should probably start off with that. Um, you know, that's very honorable of you. But well, thank you for that. And you know, I'm I'm not like a lot of those guys uh, that were combat veterans. I was a peacetime veteran. Obviously, I was a U.S. Army guy, sure. and we were trained to go. But I was one of the luckier ones that didn't have to go. And uh, but we were ready to go. And sure. uh, I really have a lot of admiration for those that did. Sure. And I I guess I just I don't really see it any different, right? Like it, whether you get obviously like going is potentially you know. A lot worse but I, I think like I don't really see it any different right the fact that you guys were ready to go is just as relevant as anything else right so that's, well, thank you that's for cool. that no, thank you um so maybe before we kind of get into all the fun stuff that you're doing now let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with kind of where you grew up sure I I grew up in Florida I was an, okay. uh, an army brat I was born in Germany my dad was a US Army officer and okay uh, one of my sisters was born over there, and then I had uh, another sister and a brother born in the States. We were raised in Florida, okay. went to uh, public schools here on the West Coast, about an hour south of Tampa, in a town called Sarasota. Sure. I uh, was fortunate enough uh, to make it to college, Florida State University. I got my degree in hotel and restaurant administration. What made you want my to take that, out of curiosity? Well, you know, it's kind of strange. Great question. I... Uh, I originally wanted to do architecture. Okay. Uh, very detail oriented, but when I got up there, I found out that I was going to have to change schools, and I had already been in, in school and enrolled for a year, of course, doing basic studies, and didn't want to have to do that with the friends I had made. But so at the time, actually, <laughs> funny enough, I was working in a restaurant, and I thought, what a fascinating business this might be. Interesting. Uh, so I, I got so I. I sw- you know, I went into that major, and what I really liked about it was there was a hundred percent placement for jobs, and I was kind of looking at life after college at a young age, and I, I did get I had nine job offers, and I took the one with the Chart House Restaurant Companies, and uh, went to California. Of course, we were wearing top ciders and navy slacks, navy blue slacks, and Hawaiian shirts, and I kind of liked that more than the suit and tie. Interesting, and. Um, after California, I went down and I worked in the Virgin Islands and then spent time in Miami and Coconut Grove at the chart house there and then decided that, uh, you know, the long hours, of course, this is back in the 80s, uh, we're, you know, we're, so I decided to, I was a little bit older, I had you know, four or five years of management experience and I decided that I wanted to go back to law school. Okay. And virtually with not a lot of funding, but the army at that time, because my dad had been in the army and I kind of felt like it was my duty to serve time. I decided to go into the army and get the army college fund. Okay. And interesting. which is what I did at that time, they had two and three and four year enlistment. So I took a three year enlistment and I got uh, stationed at Fort Carson, Colorado, which was a really nice place to be for a guy that loves the outdoors. And I was with the fourth infantry division and did my time, like I said previously, that I you know, wasn't called to combat. Uh, 
actually got out, came back to Sarasota, was reunited with a lady that I had known uh, 10 or 12 years prior, and we uh, started a relationship, and <laughs> I don't know, uh, law school, my brother actually talked me out of it. I got accepted. I was going to go to Nova University down there in Fort Lauderdale, and he taught me out of it, and, I, and my wife and I, decided, well, it was my girlfriend at the time, decided to go into business together and open up a backpacking, camping, and actually, that's not true. We decided to open up an environmental store. Okay. Uh, selling environmentally safe products and, and uh, uh, things like that. It was the time now. It was like 1989. And then we morphed into a backpacking and camping store three years after that. There was no competition here. We ran that business for 23 years. Wow. Um, so I fast forwarded. We led people on guided trips to the Andes and the South America uh, for a little over 10 years. That must have been amazing, then, actually, those trips. Yeah, it's, been kind of, it's been an interesting life. And then, of course, in 2008, the mortgage bubble broke sure. worldwide. Uh, we lost a lot of our bread and butter uh, with our travel business. Of course, the store did well. And then I started working on the part-time at the Nathan Benerson Park here in Sarasota. They were building a world-class rowing facility, and our mission was to bring – uh, world rowing back to the States. It hadn't been here since 1994. And so I was tasked with building a volunteer corps. Okay, and interesting. so I built a volunteer corps on the side, uh, over 12,000 volunteers in five years. We, we, we put together, you know, 65 page packet. We got the world championships to come here just last year. Wow. And, but in the meantime, I was involved in a traffic accident and, I suffered a minor concussion, also known as a TBI, and my life literally spun out of control. Uh, the mood swings were almost, uh, uh, they, were, they happened the day after. Uh, I went into a, to condense it, within a year we sold our family business. I went to work for uh, the park full time. Uh, I was getting more and more out of control uh, with my mood swings, and before I knew it, I was involved in a, a divorce, and everything was spiraling out of control. Now, I don't know how deep we want to get involved in your show, but what really happened was was an assault that had taken place uh, against me when I was 11 years old, and I basically had hid that for over 40 years. Wow. So that was the crux of the problem. When I had the TBI, it brought everything surfaced, and this all came out. Um, long story short, 2015, uh, my wife had separated from me and had moved up to Virginia to take care of her mom, who had fallen in their 90s and had broken her hip and her shoulder. And I went up there to surprise her on Christmas Day 2015, and she basically said, she looked at me, she had fear in her eyes, and she said, we're finished. Um, you're starting to stalk me now. Uh, it's over. So what I did was I drove all the way back down to Jacksonville, Florida. And you got to understand at this time I had a real hard time even putting four or five sentences together because of where my mind was at and the damage to my brain, which I later found out through an MRI and CAT scan that it was uh, worse than we initially thought. So I called, I reached out, it was Christmas, the morning after Christmas. I, I was like the only guy at the Holiday Inn Express and the lady that worked in the buffet line. And it really was excruciating for me not to be with my family during the Christmas season. Sure. So called a crisis center. They kept me. They walked me off the ledge. 47 weeks of cognitive behavioral therapy to get my coping skills and my speech pathology back on track. And six months of a really well-known uh, doctor who works with hemp-based products, CBDs, you know them. You know, it's an alternative medicine sure. to the, the typical Prozac and those things to get your sleep patterns under control. Six months of pharmaceutical-grade CBDs uh, help to heal the neural pathways in my brain, my right frontal lobe, my left real op occipital lobe. Got me back on track, and then we uh, started this business, Green Zone Hero, 25 months ago. And, you know, here we are in, in a different place. And uh, my, my just want to let people know that 
no matter how big bad things can get in your relationship with your significant other or spouse or your business or whatever, you can always turn it around. So I, uh, I saved my marriage. We're still right. working on that. And, um, I'm blessed to have her, you know, uh, back in my life again. And, and then I, I'm blessed to be with the group of people I'm with, with the company I've started with green zone. And I just continue, you know, Kevin, we talked about it at the outset when we were off sure. Mike. I'm just very blessed to uh, to be where I'm at and to be meeting the people that I'm meeting and working on building this global network that will truly change the paradigm for not only commerce but also for healing of people that have been traumatized. So sure, I know it's all long winded and but that's my story in, a, in five minutes. No, I, I I think it's great. The the thing that I like about um, somebody like yourself is you're willing to openly talk about these kind of like deeply personal things, right? And I think the message that you just kind of mentioned that I want to reiterate to people is like, obviously, it got pretty dark there for you. Um, but you pulled out of it, right? And I think that in itself is, is inspirational, right? And the fact that you're willing to tell people about, you know, all these kind of things, because um, one of them, I think, would be enough to potentially, you know, um, kind of just give up. But multiple of, you know, a few of them, right? It, and being able to still pull through that, I think, is really inspiring. So, you know, thanks for sharing that. That's deeply personal, and I really appreciate that. Well, thanks. And, you know, it just, you know, since I came out, you know, um, it's amazing how many men and women have approached me through, you know, messaging and, you know, pro you know, and there's similar stories out there. And you know, the thing about sexual assault is it's pandemic. And one out of five boys globally is assaulted before sure. the age of 18. Yep. Girls have it a little bit worse, way worse at one out of three. One's too many. Sure. But, you know, uh, that's not good. And, and, and amazingly, a lot of times it's people that we know. So yep. I recently read a book, and I'm not really here to plug his book, but it's a great book by a Navy SEAL named James Hatch, who has a book called Touching the Dragon. And it's all about trauma and cognitive behavioral therapy. But what I like what James said is that you never really fully get over something like that. Sure, It's always there and it takes real effort. And the only way you can really get through it is to be open about it and to find other people that have had similar experiences that can relate to it and you can help each other. So it is, you know, this is the interesting thing about the human being is that every single single human being has been through a trauma, whether it's loss of a loved one, financial ruin, uh, divorce, assault, combat trauma, and the list of traumas goes on because we're all just trying to get by sure. and sometimes we need help. So um, the, the, pro, the, the, the challenge is, is for the society at large not to stigmatize people who have been traumatized because when you do that, the person like myself, the reason why I didn't get help at 11 years old, because I knew innately that there was going to be a social stigma to that. Sure. Even at 11 yeah. years old, I knew that. Sure. So who am I going to tell? And even and so it's important for people that maybe haven't been through that trauma or cannot relate to that type of trauma, not to stigmatize people. I was an eleven year old boy. I didn't deserve that. Totally. You know, yeah. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And why somebody would do that, I don't really it doesn't matter to me why they would do it, but it happened and all I can do is forgive them and forgive myself. Sure. Uh but anyhow, so I mean that's that's a deep subject, but but you're right, and thank you for that, because, you know, you have to be open and honest. And I have a Wix website, and it's called Authentic Warriors, and I, I talk about being honest in a room full of blindfolded people. And if you can't do it with blindfolded people, you're never going to be able to look in the mirror yeah. and, and, and get your life back on track. So no, I, I, I get it. Yeah, I had a close family member go through the same kind of stuff, um, you know, from the, the – uh, you know, assault side and uh, just watching them deal with that. Like it's, it was a lot and it took decades for them to actually tell them too. So, or just like tell people about it. So, you know, and the person that did it to them was like a close friend neighbor actually. And like, 
um, like that, the person was like long dead by decades, right? So, you know, just yeah, it's it's quite, uh, you know, it's it's a lot more to deal with, and I think a lot of people realize, right? But uh, I, I want to kind of get really into what you're doing with Green Zone Hero, and and why did you kind of start the company, and what exactly do you guys do? Well, Green Zone Hero is a for-profit branding company, and what we do is we give tools and strategies to companies that are already doing great work to support veterans, okay. active duty military, and their families. They're already doing the work. It's just that a lot of times nobody really knows about it. Sure. And so for a subscription fee, people come in, they join the network, we give them the tools. And how we how we really started is we were trying to do a, a – um, obstacle race course company and take volunteer hours and convert them to, to supporting veteran programs at the local level. Okay. And of course we weren't capitalized to make that thing happen. But what we learned in the process was that just about every company out there does something for veterans. They just don't have a platform to tell people about it. So sure. we only had like a, so a green zone is a set as a safe place well, relatively safe place in a combat zone. A green zone hero is a safe place for veterans and active duty military and their families to patronize. So in other words, the, the hero is the business that cares about the heroes. Okay, and interesting. we only had a holding page. I tell you, Kevin, we, ha we had a holding page and we went out and in the first month in my hometown, Sarasota, Florida, we had 27 people sign up pay the fee without even having anything to really give them. Wow. So That's great, man. Congrats. Within the first 90 days, we were reaching out for to build sustainable programs with nonprofits. And sure. I reached out to Marcus Luttrell's uh, Lone Survivor Foundation, which is really well known. And I, and I met a person on the phone, Vanessa Force, who works with them and does all of their programming. Within 30 days, they had our logo on their website because – Marcus and his group, and especially Vanessa, saw what we were doing, and they went, holy cow, this is pretty cool. So they do amazing things. So that was validation in and of itself. But we work with Gold Star families. We can get to that. But here's where we are today. We have over 600 members in over 30 states. Wow, that's great, man. We have Congrats. members in Canada. We have, we've got some partners down, down in Australia. I'm getting ready to work with Scott Johnson wow. over at VeteranOwned.UK uh, over in the UK. Uh, we have been endorsed by Harley Davidson Motorcycles, Boar's Head Provisions, the Community Health Network, 27 locations down in here treating people uh, for AIDS. They've joined us. We've got the support of the largest John Deere dealership in the world with Everglades, John Deere, and Mission Barbecue is on board, and we just continue to get people to pay, you know, from mom and pop to larger companies to continue to join and build this network, and and we're not done yet, and I got to tell you, we're really starting to see some great traction, and then recently, we started Straight out of Combat Radio, which is a podcast like yours, which tells people stories, and what we're doing is we're honoring veteran wisdom. There's a what public do you mean perception. By that? Well, there's a public perception that veterans are broken, and especially combat veterans. Okay. And it's just not true. What What do you mean and by broken? Sorry, had, just just to clear clarify that. Go ahead. What do you mean by broken? Well, you know, when something when an event happens, usually the first thing somebody asks, you know, especially if it's a firearm event, it was it a veteran? Okay. Uh, but you start to read stories and the way even how they're twisted in the in the media, you know, like there's something wrong with them. Okay. That, I got you. that they're totally, you know, they've come back and they can't assimilate that the, the surely they have their challenges, but just like everybody else, you know, we've interviewed uh, people with the rank of private all the way up to generals. Okay. Lieutenant General Flynn was on our show. Okay. Uh, we've got Navy veteran uh, Ron DeSantis who's ru running for the Florida governorship and we've had Females on there, and and we just recently uh, Scott Jackman, who runs Whiskey's Wish down in Australia, he's our most recent podcast host and our interviewee, and so we're trying to diminish the negative stereotype 
by telling these stories and rehumanizing veterans to the to the world at large. Um, one of the programs we've kind of put on hold for the moment is the Angel Brigade Radio. Uh, Chris Hager was the uh, lost his son in Iraq, but he's the host of that show. Okay. And we're just trying to work out some kinks. But what he does is he tells the stories of the Gold Star families and people who have lost immediate family members. And again, we're trying to educate people about what Gold Star means. And it's not an award that you get. Okay. I was with um, Jill Stevenson, who they wrote the book about the heart of a ranger, lost her son, Ben Kopp, U.S. Army Ranger, was wounded in an action in Afghanistan, came back to the States, died on the table, and his heart beats today along with a lot of other body parts and other people. The death of Ben saved the lives of people all over the place. And wow. I was at a function, Chris Peranto, who was in Benghazi uh, during that debacle, um, well, we went to hear him speak, but, and, and I introduced Jill as a gold star mother to a, um, uh, a congressman's aide and he gave her a high five. Okay. And I'm like, you don't get a high five for a gold star family. And so what it made me realize is that we have to, we have a lot of work to do to educate people. So that's the angel brigade. Okay. And then task force Zen Healing Without Labels will be a global platform that will literally change the paradigm for commerce and healing. And we're going to be we're going to create a global platform and put modalities from acupuncture to yoga, equestrian, canine, uh, poetry, creative writing, gardening, all the modalities that have proven science behind it. Guitar, piano. Things that people can actually do to heal themselves. And there's people out there that want to help people to do these things. We just want to build a nexus point where we can educate the world about it and 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 really work in the direction to to heal the human condition. It can sure. be done. All it takes is a handful of people. Doesn't take doesn't take a million I mean, it just takes a few people to, to start that ball. And then we can get it going. But, you know, when you when you find out that, you know, they had aromatherapy back with the Egyptians 5000 years ago. Sure. And, you know, whatever happened to poetry and writing, those are all therapeutical aspects of living. And I got to tell you, I'm 59 years old, just turned 59 last week. And Happy I picked up a birthday. <laughs> well, thank you, man. Thanks, Kevin. I picked up a guitar for the first time. I have a, really? a Taylor acoustic and I have. A Stratocaster electric, and nice. for the last eight months, I've been learning how to play guitar, man, and it has been really cool. So, sure, it's so fun, uh, hey. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I wrote a piece. We used, you know, like Metallica. I yeah. wrote a piece for LinkedIn about okay. their song "One." Sure. I don't know if you know that yeah, song, yeah. but it's yeah, it's a PTSD song, and and amazingly, after I wrote that, the number of people that are following us is, is everything's just good, and. It's going to get better, sure. you know, but all we can worry about is today and how we can affect the next, you know, 30 minutes. Sure. Um, and that's what all of this is, this whole thing about mindfulness and and healing and and it just it's just about being present. And I know you've heard that before. So sure. Well, no, but I but I think the thing that's that's really great about kind of what you're doing is not only did you overcome a bunch of obstacles in your career or in life, you basically, you know, got through that and now you created a business, you know, and that and your business just happens to be giving back to kind of others, right? So I, I think just kind of to, you know, that's a very oversimplification of kind of what you've done. But I think basically I've heard so many times from, from people that, you know, that they've come back from, you know, or they get, they're done in the military, and then they, you know, they don't know what to do, right? Or, you know, they struggle with kind of how to start a business or, or kind of get back in, in the, you know, kind of, I, I guess, um, everyday kind of regular North American life, right? Or wherever, it doesn't really necessarily have to be just in North America. But so I think, you know, the fact that somebody like yourself is open to talk about all this stuff and created a business and got through a bunch of kind of ups and downs in life, I, I think is inspiring for other people listening. Well, thank you. I, you know, I can't say enough. I haven't done it alone. 
Sure. And, uh, you know, I have strong spiritual value. You know, I, I found out that was the first thing I had to figure out was that you, you can't do it alone. And, and, and it's really nice if you can find some kind of spiritual foundation. But even that, I met some very rare human beings like Dan Dwyer okay. uh, out in Colorado who has vet the biz life. Been an incredible mentor. The guy is on top of his game. Uh, meeting people like you know Edwin Richardson, uh, Air Force guy that does uh, Richardson Strategies. His company is Trust. Okay. Uh, then you know Otis McGregor, uh, Major Otis McGregor, Special Forces retired with LTO Enterprises uh, that has some that's committed to helping leaders uh, up their game. And then you got organizations like Bravo Seven Four Eight that give veterans opportunities to tell their stories. You know, Bobby Henline's story, a lot of people know about Bobby, and, you know, he was blown up. Three of his wow. buddies were killed, and he was burned to a crisp, and and he's, he's making his, he's turned his life around. He's doing some pretty cool things with Bravo 748 and Freedom Hard, and then you got, uh, and then just at the local level here, you got a uh, close friend, LaVon Bauer, with uh, Paws and Warriors, uh, taking wounded animals to hospice centers around the state to, to enrich in people's lives. And, you know, and, and the list goes on Scott bill with the Brian bill foundation, 31 heroes, 31 miles for 31 heroes and Terry Ford and Christian Kovac and the work those guys do, uh, to bring recognition and raise funds for people that really can use it. And, you know, whiskey's wish down in Australia, uh, Scott Jackman, I said, the Australian guy, we, we had a killer interview with him and, you know, the things that he's doing for first responders and correctional off officers, you know, and the list goes on. And then our company, sure. we're, we're really, you know, we want to make money and, 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 and we should because of the tools. We really want to help our clients uh, get recognized for the great things they're already doing and, and to put us in as part of their strategy to to get that part of that trillion dollar market. Um, you know, we just want to be better. We want to continue to improve. And we want everybody that does business with us or associates with us to be better too. And the stories go on and on, Kevin. I mean, I, you know, Josh Montz, the darker side of the soul. I mean, what a phenomenal guy. You know, his his senior NCO is killed instantly by a sniper bullet in Baghdad. Wow. Bullet goes through the, that person and goes into his femoral artery and he bleeds out and dies on the battlefield and comes back from that. Wow. Um, you know, his story is phenomenal. And, and then I got my old buddy over here, uh, Richard Caruso, United States Marine Corps guy who the guy's phenomenal. He does so much to help veterans. And he was working the California prison system and he turned the table on a lot of illegal activities on his own uh, prison guards. They did the movie Felon about him and the things that that guy does behind the scenes to inspire and to really support veterans is phenomenal. So I'm, I'm in some pretty good league, man. I mean, I've, I've, uh, you know, and it's the, it's the ultimate power of the universe. that's making it happen. And I just continue And people like you, you may not realize this, but you given somebody like me and others like me, the opportunity to tell our story, you're part of this, man. You know, you're helping to create this global juggernaut, of podcasters who who want to be real again. You know, and I got to tell you this, man. People are all looking for something. You know what they're looking for? They want to believe in something again. Yeah, that's fair. I appreciate that. That's yeah, it's you're you're right. I, I think we went through a weird phase or maybe we're just coming out of it or whatever where it was like people were kind of just well I, I think even social media promotes it like you only see the highlight reel of somebody's life right like i i know stories of people that only post like they almost like like f come up with these ideas of like what to post to social media to make their life sound and seem amazing when they could be going through like some of the worst things in in their life right like it's this weird kind of illusion that you know, and I think people are so kind of get they look at especially maybe not so, like younger people that look at this stuff sometimes and say, like, how come my life's not like this? You're like, well, that person's life 
that's posting that stuff isn't like that either. They're just, it's like an illusion, right? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because it's true. You know, there are amazing times, but you know, if I have to write down that I'm, and I don't mean any disrespect to anybody, don't take this in the wrong way and you out there that may be doing this. If I have to write down that I'm in downtown Sarasota having a blast eating a hot dog, I can tell you my life's probably not very amazing. Um, And I'm not saying that to be rude and disrespectful, but what I'm saying is there's some great truth to what you say. And that, that therein lies what we talked about earlier, the illusion of who to trust and who not to trust. And, and I had this discussion with Edwin, you know, Richardson. Okay. And that's why he picked the name. He wants to put trust back in, in, in the equation between people. You know, I, I, you know, like Scott Husing. I met, you know, Major Scott Husing, who wrote the book Echo and Ramadi. Okay. And man, he's a warrior. On the outside, he's a warrior. And you know, those guys did some phenomenal things in 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 Ramadi. But you talk to him in person. The guy is so sensitive, and he loves his Marines. And and this and behind the scenes, he might not. That guy is as authentic as they come. And and to hear, you know, you got to get that book, The Echo and Ramadi. But right. my point is, if there there are some authentic people out there that may, you just have to figure it out for yourself. And the only way you can do that is to actually reach out and meet these people, or actually buy their books or visit their companies, use their services uh, to, to, to find out on your own. But don't just believe everything that, that you that you read. And I can assure you, just what you just said, Kevin, which is, carries a lot of truth in it, there, there's, there's, that could just be a thin veneer yep. to what the real truth is. I 100% agree. I, I think it's, it's fascinating, right? Well, I can tell you, man, people that know me, Probably had no idea that all those years that that I was suffering, I always came off as a hard charger and real confident and this and that. But let sure. me tell you, man, inside, I was in so much pain, it was ridiculous. And when you bottle that pain up for 40-something years and you wow. finally have a head injury to let it come out, sure. it is a very, very, very exhilarating feeling to get that off your shoulders sure. and to finally, like I said, I had to go 40 something years of living in the shadows. So, you know, all I can say is if you're living in the shadows out there, I don't care if you're a boy or girl, a man or woman, early adult, you know, early age adult, you don't have to live in the shadows. There's people out there. I mentioned quite a few of them so far in your show, Kevin and sure. myself. They can help lead you and point your, you know, point you in the right direction. Um, anyhow, so yeah, it, it's it's life is what you make it. You make your own choices. Certainly, we're all challenged at times, and there are, you know, when I was climbing mountains, and this is probably a good analogy. All right. I climbed mountains for ten years. Okay. Actually, almost twelve years. High altitude climbing was as close as I could come to the military and not be in the military because you're with people that that want to be on a team. They want to be challenged and they want to do it in high fashion. Well, I got to tell you, you see all these pictures at the summits with everybody smiling and high fiving it and thumbs up. Well, there's very few summits and there's a lot more valleys and a lot more ridge lines. And I can tell you that high altitude climbing is one of the most demanding challenging hard sports that you're ever going to do. I can imagine. And that's kind of how life is. You can't breathe. You get headaches. Uh, you can have pulmonary edema. You can die up there. And many people do. But just to capture that five minutes on the top and get down before the glacier melts and you might have a rock fall, just to capture that five minutes is worth every flipping ridge line and valley that you have to go through sure and it's like that in life yeah you have a moment in life savor it wear it as a badge of honor because you earned it sure and anytime you're ever feeling down and you're in that abyss remember those times those are the times that will keep you driving on for more because you know what, a guy was telling me, I remember my drill sergeant used to say, live your life in 3D, gentlemen. Another day, 
another dollar, another dirty shirt, because that's what life is all about. But get up and do it. And it's like a poker game. You know, you can ask for more cards. You can play the deck you got, or you can fold them. Sure. Interesting. Well, you know what, man? Ask for more cards. You don't have to be... You don't have to deal with the deck you got. Ask for more cards. Get from that freaking just getting by stage to that flow, that creative flow. And the only way you're going to get there is by courage and asking for more cards. That's how it works, man. And, uh, you know, the millennials that are coming up today, you all, you know, we left you, uh, we've left you a lot to work with. Sure. And okay. it's very challenging. Sure. I don't even like the title millennial because sure. sometimes it carries a negative connotation in fact i don't like any labels i think that the younger crowd coming up today has a tremendous opportunity because they're a lot smarter than we were coming along i think they have a tremendous opportunity to take these techno tools 21st century tools and utilize them in a way to make the human condition better sure and don't ever think because you're a millennial or you're a young person that you don't have great value. You have to just earn some life experience. And I think that that's the challenge is how do people take millennials serious? And I think that the key is in their own back pocket. Sure. Utilize your brain power. Utilize your techno skills for good. And then come back to the older guys like me and say, hey, look, man, this is how I can be part of the network. Come on. And then guys like me, if you're out there and ladies in my age group, let's give this younger crowd the opportunities to be part of that. Yeah. So I wish I just wish the millennials. I got two sons that are one. I just wish that they weren't so jaded at times. And it's and, and it's easier for me to say because you know I grew up when GDP was a lot more than three percent and. You know, when there was some actual, uh, when everything wasn't so rude and crude at times in, in, in media. So, you know, they say the last of the good old days was the 50s and the 60s. Well, I'm not sure. I think today's pretty good days. And sure. you just have to utilize what you got to make it happen. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I, I guess like I'm 35, so I'm like just a millennial. And I think, I actually think it's hilarious. And it, in some ways, like... I think it's actually, I kind of like the fact that you're basically written off as like lazy and kind of you're never going to do anything. So the bar is so low that if you actually even make like a little bit of an effort or you actually basically put yourself out there or you actually work hard, it gets noticed a lot easier than I think a lot of other generations because you're already pigeonholed as kind of like useless. So if you just show like a little bit, put in a little bit of effort to show that you're not that, I think like in, in some ways that's always been kind of advantage for me. And I think I've said it a few times on the show before, but like it, the fact that you're almost like written off to me is I've tried to use it as like a strength instead of kind of like a weakness to something. Right. And I've even told people before, it's like, you know, fine, if you, you can think this about me, but that's your kind of loss and that's kind of your closed mindedness that, you know, is basically screwing yourself, not necessarily me, right? And they kind of look at you like, oh, yeah, you're, you're right. And then it's like, oh, are you interested still? It's like, no, I have no, no interest in kind of working with that person. But, um, you know, I hopefully going forward, they you know, kind of reevaluate. So for me, it's been interesting, right? And I think even to your sons, it's kind of like, well, look, like most of the stuff I do, including my day job, which has nothing to really do with the show, I guess, is like we partner with a company in America to sell the product that I work on kind of during the day. This show airs in a bunch of states in America, you know, so like geographic regions don't really matter anymore, right? And the fact that you have they have access to the internet like my generation well every generation but I think like that my generation kind of grew up on it and the younger generation kind of grew up on it like I was joking the other day I my daughter was trying like she's three and she didn't understand that you can't like fast forward live TV right like just things like that are just kind of funny right so I think to your point like we grew up with it we should be trying to show you know people the generations before us 
how to use some of this stuff and leverage this stuff into you know their businesses because we we understand it because we've grown up with it right absolutely you know and a few things congratulations on your daughter and um thanks man you know and there you go you just pointed out um you know that that stigma that millennials are useless and what happens is when you start believing that it becomes your it becomes embedded in your dna and sure. let me tell you nobody's useless you're, they're only useless if they want to be useless sure. yep. and when somebody and i'm glad you're able to take that and use it as a strength because if somebody tells you that you're useless and I, and again the reality is is they're useless because if yep. they have to tell you that they got some major hangups totally um, there are there are people out there and i'm one of them that believe that all of the challenges facing the the human condition of today can be solved and it can only be solved by open communication and to not think about borders sure and I, and i and you know you there are people out there too that believe that we don't need governments to make things happen that it yeah. can totally happen through social entrepreneurs that have an agenda that is ethical you know regardless of what anybody believes there are still ethics in business there's got to be otherwise there'd be no business sure but that being said interesting one of the what would really be cool and of course this what what, what would happen if an enemy combatant came on to straight out of combat radio to tell his side of the story yeah and what was it like for him to go through to fight the americans and what was it like for him to go back home to his village and how did he deal with it yeah and i will bet you that his experiences are very similar to the experiences of our own soldiers sure you know that that would just be fascinating now i don't want to get in the habit of interviewing enemy combatants but i just think that that story would be interesting totally yeah the opposite uh, per perspective on things is always fascinating whether you agree with it or not coming out the end of the conversation just being understanding or understand where somebody's coming from it is always kind of fascinated me sure you know and think about this i now i had this is i'm not going to give them away but i had a vietnam veteran okay who was talking to me you know he had his own issues but he was telling me about post-traumatic stress and what he went through and he said, you know, honestly, John, I put myself in, in the shoes of a Viet Cong. And the Viet Cong were the rebel fighters that were fighting the Americans and the other allies that were there. Sure. And he said, you know, if somebody attacked the United States, I got to tell you, I would have been a Viet Cong. And he said, I'd be part of a rebel force trying to get rid of the organized armies that were in my country. So think about that. I mean, in, when you look at the, 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 the indigenous population that was living in our own countries, yeah. you don't think you're going to fight? That's your land. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not saying this to, I'm not trying to be political here. Don't, I'm, I'm trying to look at the human condition of it all. Sure. You know, you're going to defend what's yours so how did we improve things or you know we we can always say that but you know i i talked to public affairs officer that was in um iraq okay they were telling me that sometimes the, the, you know, that they weren't told to get good news they were told to get bad news okay Interesting. and yeah i mean so all of this negative stuff we hear coming out of the middle east What's really going on? How come we don't hear the good stories about the villages that were, we were helping or, or uh, people that got water or electricity for the first time ever? Those are the stories we should have been talking about, not the latest IED, although we don't want to forget those. Don't sure. think for yeah. one second we want to forget that and the sacrifices. But why don't we be honest with what was really going on? Just, you know... Again, I don't want to get into political realm. I want to keep it positive. Sure. But what I'm, I guess the point that I'm trying to make is there's always two sides to every story. Yeah. Well, and I, I think like you don't hear all the positives that are going on kind of globally. You always 
traditionally you hear all kind of the negative stuff, right? And and that's kind of what I'm really trying to do with the show, and it sounds like you're trying to do with your show, is, is actually promote people that are making a real change in the world and, and trying to make it better, right? It's not always everything we do is not always better, but I, I think we're, that's what we're trying to do, right? Is we're, we're basically, and trying to promote others that are trying to make it better for themselves or kind of their community or, or the world at large and kind of every everybody in between. Well, even, yeah, exactly, man. I couldn't agree with, even like the musicians that we have met, like Ryan sure. Weaver. Okay. Ryan Weaver's with the Professional Bull Riders Association, and he is a uh, music artist who was a Black Hawk helicopter pilot. His brother and his brother-in-law were both killed in combat. And then John Preston, United States Marine, who his song was on top of the charts in Europe for many, many, many weeks, several months, actually. And then, you know, Adam C. Martin and, okay. and J.P. Guns and J.P. Lane and Nick Sterling and, and all of these artists who have come back that have been in, many of them self-taught musicians, by the way, who tried to bring the light, the plight of the veterans, but also dealing with some pretty interesting concepts like, you know, uh, suicide prevention and post-traumatic stress. And, you know, rather than taking negative things that happened to them, they're trying to find the light in those experiences to bring light to other people's lives. And, and you know, I got to tell you, there's this um, lady down in Texas. Her name's Brittany Clarkson, and she's a massage therapist. And okay. she called me. I was in Virginia last year, and she said, hey, you know, I heard about your company. I was working out in a gym out here in Austin, and... I want to know more about Green Zone Hero. And I told her, and she couldn't, she couldn't, she didn't hesitate to join. Send me the money to get into our network. She's a California lady living in Texas. And then I, I linked up with her by phone, I don't know, 90, 120 days later. And she said, My business has improved so much just because of the credibility by putting your digital logo in my press stuff, my advertising. She said it was night and day. And I guess my point is that there's people everywhere that are trying to make people's lives better. Sure. And they're making money doing it. And why not? So if we can use Greens, if your company or organization or anybody, and this is a plug, if you can use something extra for your strategy to, to get more business and to make your game better, then join our network. Just grow with us. Um, and, 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 and make something happen. Be a positive influence in the world. No matter what you're doing, your business is important. I don't care if you're a hamburger place or you know massage therapy or whatever you do. It's important to the social strata that we tell people about you. So anyhow, so... Life's good, brother. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, that's that's great, man. I, I love that. I, I think it's it's really good. So we're kind of coming to the end, though, but I really want to give maybe people a, a quick uh, recap of what exactly is Green Zone Hero and what do they kind of get? How does it kind of work? And, and what's the cost for them to actually join up? Well, Green Zone Hero is a for-profit branding company, and we recognize and honor and give tools and strategies to companies that are already doing things for veterans, um, active duty military and their families. You're already doing it. It's a directory type platform. We have a manifesto of best practices. We have access to digital tools and actually documentary movies that you can use in your marketing strategies to get more business. Uh, we're working on a tiered pricing right now. Right now it's $500 for a year. Okay. But, but we're actually looking for a tiered pricing uh, with one that's a little bit less, you wouldn't get all the tools, uh, but for companies that may not be able to afford that, and then one that's a little bit more, we're looking at where we would actually, I'm getting ready to contract with a company to handle all of our clients' social media uh, network uh, needs. Sure. And so we have also, so we have those memberships available. We also have founderships available. We have a two-year foundership package uh, that we've got, that's the one that Harley Davidson, well, actually Harley Davidson's in for life, but some of these other companies that have come on board, 
And then we have a sponsorship package for the podcast. We're looking at sponsors uh, to help with the podcast. We have a couple of companies in the CBD world. Uh, Koi CBDs out of Colorado is looking at that. And actually, Ojai Energetics in Southern California is looking at doing some things with us for the podcast. Um, and then Task Force Zen, which is not – that's a legacy project. And I, actually, if anybody's listening and you're a philanthropist – and you want to leave your mark on the world, then help us with that project. Because that project, I'm telling you, Kevin, is rock solid. It will literally change uh, the paradigm. Uh, I'm convinced for commerce and healing. Uh, it's healing without labels. So if you're a philanthropist out there listening, you can contact me, uh, uh, john at greenzonehero.com. But if you're interested in the website, go to www, World Wide Web, greenzonehero.com. Uh, I'm available. Uh, you can leave a message on my cell phone, which is advertised on there. We got a Google uh, phone. We got email, too. And uh, we got a great crew working for us. Go on there, see who our team is. We've got some excellent people working with us. And uh, just can't say enough about, Kevin, about you and giving me this great opportunity to uh, – to spend time with you and to talk a little bit about important things to each of us and to other people out there. And all I can say is if you're out there and listening, you are a benefit, you are an asset, uh, your business, you as an individual, your organization, don't think for one second that you can't make a difference in the world. And, uh, if there's anything that I can ever do to, to lead you in the right direction or to help you, like I said, feel free to contact me. Um, I'm available, and if I'm not, I'll make myself available. So uh, God bless Canada. Um, <laughs> I, I told you a bit about my experience do, yeah. up there in Saskatchewan, and uh, you're a rock-solid country, and the people up there care about their veterans, and they care about uh, American veterans too. And uh, the experience I had there last summer with Blake Emmons and his Wounded Warrior Weekend up in uh, Lloyd Minster there on the Al Albertas. Saskatchewan border, fantastic people, fantastic program. Uh, I will forever have Canada embedded in my heart and mind because y'all took care of us, and uh, I will never forget that. So um, that being said, <laughs> join us, um, and uh, let's just make the world a better place. Well, John, I really appreciate you taking the time of your day to be on the show, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you, and have a good rest of your day, man. All right, Kevin. Hang in there, brother. Thanks for your work, man. Thanks very much. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. To join the free community, buy some merch, sponsor the show, or sign up for the newsletter, please visit the website at buildingthefutureshow.com. The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check them out at electricmantra.com and keep building the future.